What's the best looking pet? asked Joe. I don't know, said his friends. A pussy, he said. His friends all laughed. Paul wasn't quite sure why the joke was funny, but he laughed along to avoid feeling left out. Paul was twelve years old. He was very bright, but also very naive. He had started school at a young age, so most of his school friends were thirteen or fourteen. He was a bit of a misfit, and though he tried hard to fit in, he was really out of his depth as his schoolmates' conversation turned to more teenager talk. Yeah, said David. You know what else is different about pussies? Only girls can have them. Again Paul laughed along, not quite sure what the joke was. But his first reaction was take it literally. And he thought to himself, you know, David is right. Susie has a pet pussy cat, as does Rachel across the road. I can't think of any boys who have pussies. My friend Andrew has a pussy cat in the house, but it actually belongs to his sister Vicky. As Paul walked home, he thought, it's not fair that only girls are allowed to have pussies. Because he had to admit that he agreed with Joe's joke, a cat really is the best pet. He liked how they slinked around and snuggled up to people, how they weren't loud and rough and smelly like dogs. Come to think of it, dogs were a lot like boys, or at least most boys, loud, rough and smelly. Paul really envied girls. They got to wear pretty clothes and wear their hair in cute ways. True, girls couldn't stand to pee and women were the ones who had to have the babies, but Paul still thought they had the better part of the deal. And now, on top of that, it seems only girls could have pussies. It wasn't fair. But then he thought, maybe Santa could make an exception. He knew what he'd do. He'd ask Santa for a pussy for Christmas. Yes, Paul was so innocent and naive that he still believed in Santa. Most of his friends had made comments that made it clear that they didn't believe in Santa anymore, but Paul wasn't so sure. Furthermore, he wanted to believe in Santa. He loved the idea that it was a magical man who brought the presents at Christmas. So later that day, when his mum took him to the mall, Paul resolved to ask Santa for a pet pussycat for Christmas. When they got to the area where Santa was, he saw that all of the children lining up were smaller than him. But still, he was determined to sit with Santa and tell with him what he wanted. Don't you think you're a bit old for this now? his mother said. Oh please, said Paul, just one last time? I know I'll be too old when I'm a teenager, but maybe a twelve-year-old can sit with him? Okay, said his mother. But be gentle. He won't be used to big boys sitting on his lap. So Paul lined up. He watched Santa closely as he waited. Santa had a real twinkle in his eye. He knew that there was a Santa in many malls across the city, and they couldn't all be the real Santa. But this man looked special. He listened to every child closely, and seemed to have real love and wisdom in his eyes. Somehow, Paul was sure this was the real Santa. Eventually, it was Paul's turn. There was a bit of confusion getting Paul on his lap, as he was larger than the other children. Eventually, the elf directed Paul to rest his arm on the chair, so he wouldn't lean into Santa or squash him. Ho ho ho, he said. What would you like for Christmas, Paul? But he let it pass. This was the real Santa, after all. Well, Santa, he said, what I'd like, more than anything else, is a pussy. A pussy? Yes, a pussy. I've heard that only girls can have them. But I'd really like one. Santa looked carefully and thoughtfully at Paul. Well, you heard right, Paul. Only girls can have pussies. But if you really want one, I can make it happen. So on Christmas morning, I'll have a pussy? Yes, Paul, you will, said Santa. But, you've got to keep it. It's not like a toy, you can't just throw it out. I know, said Paul. 
So it's what you really want. Yes, Santa. Okay then, Paul. I'll get you a pussy. Santa raised his voice. Ho ho ho, Merry Christmas, Paul. With that, Paul hopped down and went back to his mother. What did you ask for, Paul? His mother asked. A pussy. Oh, said his mother. You realize, a pet is a big responsibility. You can't return it. If Santa gives you a pussy, you'll have to keep it and look after it for its entire life. Yes, Mom, I know that. Well, okay, if you're sure you want a pussy, and you're sure you want to keep that pussy, then maybe Santa can arrange that. He promised that he would, said Paul. And so the days counted down to Christmas. Paul was getting more and more excited, knowing he would finally get a pussy. Paul woke up on Christmas morning. He looked at his clock. 6.05 a.m. It was early, but not too early to sneak down and see what was under the tree. He got up and immediately headed down to the lounge where the Christmas tree was. Some hair trickled into his face as he walked, but he brushed it aside without giving it a thought. He turned the lounge light on and looked at the pile of presents under the tree. There, on the side, was a cat carrier with a red bow on top. Paul looked in. A little black and white kitten looked back. A pussy! Paul gasped. I've got my own pussy. The children usually had to wait until the parents were up before they could open gifts, but Paul was sure they could make an exception for a pet. He picked the carry cage up and, noticing it had a water bowl in it, carried it carefully back to his room. He set the cage down in his room, closed the door, and turned on the light. What? he thought. My room's changed. And it had. The blue bedspread and curtains had been replaced by pink ones. Instead of space in the corner for the toys he played with when he was younger, there was now a dressing table and mirror. The rest of the room was more or less the same, but why had someone snuck in a dressing table and mirror and changed his bedspread and curtains? Paul went over and looked at the mirror. Then he looked I in the mirror and got the shock of his life. He looked like a girl. His face was his, exactly the same. But his hair was long, down to his shoulders, like a girl. Furthermore, he was wearing light purple pajamas, with Elsa and Anna from Frozen on the front. I'm a, I'm a girl? He thought for a moment. So if I'm a girl, that means. He pulled his pajama pants down. Instead of boys' underpants, he now had pink panties on. There was no bulge in the front at all. It can't be. He pulled the panties down to look. There was no penis there. Instead, there was a vertical slit. He knew this was a vulva. So it's true, he whispered, only girls can have pussies. Santa turned me into a girl. Paul wasn't sure whether to be excited or disappointed. He liked the idea of being a girl and having a pet cat. But the one thing he liked about being a boy was having a penis. He liked to be able to stand and pee. Would he now always be sitting to pee? Paul decided he might as well take his top off too. He hadn't noticed before, but there on his chest were two small but well-formed breasts. He gave them a little feel. They were soft and kind of nice to touch. Except the nipples they were quite sensitive, though he got a small tingling if he touched them ever so gently. I guess having boobs might be interesting, thought Paul. Oh, and I guess that means I get to wear a bra. Paul had always been slightly fascinated by bras. He looked in his top drawer and, sure enough, there was a small selection of bras. Some were white, though one was more of an off-white color. He picked out one of the white ones. He admired how soft and lacy it looked. Paul hooked the bra over his shoulders. 
He carefully put one small boob in each cup then he reached around and, with some difficulty, latched it up at the back. He looked at himself in the mirror again. He looked like indeed he was a young woman in her underwear. She pushed the cups of the bra together. Wow, I've even got cleavage, she smiled. She looked down at her panties again, flat against her smooth crotch. She still was kind of disappointed about her penis being gone, but as she looked in the mirror, she was sure her hips were a bit wider. She really did seem to have the beginnings of a female figure. And she liked the feel of the bra holding her boobs, and the panties flush against her flat crotch. She still missed her penis, but had to admit that being a girl both looked nice, and felt nice. Then she saw something she hadn't seen before, a dress hanging on her chair. It was a bright red sleeveless dress, and Paul guessed correctly that it had been especially chosen as a Christmas dress. She decided to put on the dress and see how she looked. She wasn't sure which way to do it, to step into it or pull it over the top. She decided to pull it over the top, like a t-shirt. She reached her arms into the armholes and it fell into place. It felt a bit loose, and she realized there was a button at the back, which she reached around and did up. Again, she admired herself in the mirror. The dress sat nicely, but not immodestly, highlighting her small boobs and her hips. It had little frills around the bottom. She gave a little twirl and giggled. She liked it. She'd never been able to be pretty before. But there was no denying, in this dress she was a pretty almost teen girl. A mew came from the cat cage. Oh sorry pussy, I forgot about you. How could I? You're the reason I'm like this. She opened the door and picked the cat up. She snuggled it into her chest and enjoyed how it gently pushed into her new boobs. I'm not sure what I'll call you, she said, but for now it's just puss. She looked at the tag on the cage. To Paula, Merry Christmas. Well that makes sense, she thought, I've gone from Paul to Paula. With still no one up, Paula found a brush on the dressing table and brushed her shoulder-length hair. She wasn't sure if she should put anything in it. But she saw a headband on the dresser, so put that in, trying to remember how the girls at school did it. Again, she admired herself in the mirror. Not only was she pretty, but she was also cute. Eventually she heard noises as the rest of her family got up. Paula wasn't sure what to do. The gift tag said Paula, but would the rest of the family be surprised to see that Paul was now a girl? She needn't have worried. Everyone thought it was completely normal and called her Paula. Her parents also occasionally called her Sweetie or Princess. Paula loved it. She loved being a pretty girl and loved being treated like one. After breakfast, came the moment she'd been worried about. Her bladder was full, and she needed to use the toilet. She went into the bathroom with some trepidation. She enjoyed being a girl. She enjoyed being pretty and wearing a pretty dress. But she wasn't sure about sitting to pee. She sat the seat down, pulled down her panties, lifted her dress, and sat down. Instinctively she reached a hand under the dress to direct her penis down, but then felt and of course there was nothing to push down. Although it didn't feel right, she relaxed to let the pee come out, without directing it. And after a few moments, out it came. She felt the pee coming out of her vulva. The feeling was different, but not unpleasant. And she could tell from the splashing sound that it was going right down into the bowl like it was meant to. Once she was done, she spread her legs a bit and gave the area a wipe with the toilet paper. Well, that wasn't so bad, she thought. On the plus side, I can pee without using my hands. Since she was there with her panties down, she spent a few minutes exploring. She felt her vulva. It felt different, but not bad. She liked how smooth it was. 
She felt around a bit more, marveling at the new sensations. She wasn't sure if she liked it more than before, or not. As she felt around, she began to feel a tingling. She recognized that tingling. She used to get it as Paul when he thought about the differences between girls and boys, or when he stroked his penis. It would make his penis go hard. Now, she wasn't sure what was happening to her now, the tingling felt nice, though it was a pity there wasn't a boner to go with it. Well, I guess that's part of the price for getting a pussy, she thought. She flushed, washed her hands, and went back down to be with her family. A little while later, Paula carried Puss her older sister's room. Do you like my new pussy, Sarah? Paula asked. Lovely. Sarah said. But Paula, just one thing. What it's probably better not to call her a pussy. Pussy cat is okay, but not pussy. Why not? Well, there's no delicate way to put this, pussy is a slang word for vagina. Oh, said Paula. What's the problem? So that's what my friends meant when they said only girls have pussies. Yes. Sarah laughed. So boys can have pet cats? Of course, chuckled Sarah. Not that it affects you. Paula's face dropped, and she ran to her room. What did I say? wondered Sarah. Paula shut the door to her room, in tears. What have I done, puss? I asked for a pussy, so Santa turned me into a girl. She lifted the hem of the dress, pulled down her panties, and stared at her vulva. Her pussy. She'd given up her penis for this. No more standing to pee. Just a vulva, and she'd be sitting to pee for life. But then she thought, like the rest of her, it didn't look so bad. She liked having boobs, she liked having rounder hips, and she had to admit, she kind of liked the look of her soft, smooth mound. True, she couldn't pee standing anymore. But was that just her thinking like a little boy? Did that really outweigh the benefits of being a girl? She thought back to her morning. She had enjoyed wearing the red dress. She had enjoyed being a girl and being called Paula. And even sitting to pee, which every young boy must think is the ultimate indignity, wasn't too bad. But more than that, it felt right. Having boobs and a pussy, being a girl, seemed natural. Reaching down, and not touching a penis, it felt right. And in that moment she knew, Santa had got it right. He had seen the deepest desire of Paul's heart, and seen that a pussy was what he really wanted. Paula began crying again, but this time she was crying tears of joy. Sarah knocked on the door. Can I come in? Yes, called Paula. Paula, are you okay? Paula nodded. Were you crying? I was at first, but I'm better now. I wasn't sure if I liked my gift, but I've realized, deep down, it's what I always wanted. Santa gave me a pussy, and it's the best Christmas gift ever.